Okay, gold, AU, whatever you want to call it. It's shiny and it's very, very valuable and also very useful in electrodes because literally, well, pretty much nothing can dissolve it. Unfortunately, it's also very expensive. To combat this, in the past, people would employ alchemists to try and extract it from lead, and although that's now possible with high doses of radiation, the gold would kill you. I have a better method. If you have an old PC that's, say, broken into bits, why can't you get the gold plating off that, smelt it back down, and then turn it into, I don't know, electrodes, magical gold, just stick it on the wall and say, whoa, I got gold! So, how do we do it? Okay, so the first thing you want is old electronics. I happen to have a box of these. So, any old things will do. There's usually a small amount on circuit boards like this. There's usually things, but the things you really want to go for, I've already broken quite a lot of mine off because I've done this experiment before, is fingers like these. These have a gold top layer, and then they're layered with nickel and copper. They have a very high content of gold for their size, and it's generally the best thing to start. So if you're starting doing it, do it with these. This is a lot more tricky. Right, so the next thing you want to do is you want to smash up all of your computer parts into tiny little bits. Say, like this. Then what you want to do is you want to get a small container made of glass. Do not use metal, the acid will dissolve it. Do you not use plastic, the acid will dissolve it. Do not use anything except glass because the acid will eventually dissolve it. Then you want to do... Oh, sorry. Just don't use the tweezers, you idiot. Just put it in by hand. You want to get your fingers, stick them in there. Let me grab a few more. And I'll put the rest in off camera because I need two hands. Right, so once you've got all your own things in, the next thing is the hardest to get hold of. Unfortunately, you're gonna need hydrochloric acid. I will hopefully do a video on it, but at the moment I'm just using patio cleaner. So if I add that, it should begin to dissolve the fingers. You're gonna want to leave this for about a week after you've finished. Um, I find if you put it in a smaller container full of hot water, I'll show you what I mean in the next clip. I've just completely petered out. Sorry, I'm thinking about not, in get, not getting acid all over me, my phone, or everything else. So, yeah, what, if you want to do it a bit faster, you probably want to get, I don't know, jam jar, Fill it full of hot water, and then put it in the jam jar. So you've got the hot water on the outside, transmitting the heat to the acid. Um, I would recommend you stick a cork on the top, so that it can recirculate everything. So, I'll just stick this cork in, and then we leave it for a week. That will seem like no time at all for you, because of the magic of editing. So I got everything out of the acid and I've washed it out with the water and put it into this pan to dry. So now you've got this amount of stuff, it's bits of gold, sort of bits of plastic and copper chloride and just generally a load of rubbish. Now, separating this I'm going to smelt it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash it into the centre of this filter paper so it's all clumped up, then I can fold it round like this, cut off the end and put this into this tiny crucible I made out of the um, uh, centre of a zinc battery. So that will go in there, I'll add a little limestone to react with any impurities and make it form together very well, then I'll have a lump of probably something that's low quality gold, so high copper content gold and a bit of slag. The slag will be separate however though, so I'll then probably um, dissolve away the copper again by putting it back in the acid, but I'll see what happens after we've melted it down. For those of you who wonder how I made the crucible, it's a piece of graphite from the centre of a battery. I have another one 
here, so I've got quite a lot of them. Um, you basically just sort of grab that and pull it out, and you're left with this, which contains manganese dioxide and has zinc casing. I will do something with this. I'm not sure what. But anyway, you probably will be wondering why I've got a massive great drill under my arm. And that is because a crucible needs a hole in the centre. So, put the drill in position. Oops. And, and cut and your arms off. off. Yeah, and drill your arms off. Getting the initial hole is very difficult. Um, look at the bodge of this. I just need to make an initial hole that the drill can go into. So, of course, I'll use a soldering iron because that's professional and that's a good idea. It does help that graphite is literally the softest thing in the world. So you literally can just do that. Now, drill in the hole. Please don't fail me. <laughs> So you've got a bit of a hole there. You then continue drilling until you have a big hole. Okay, so now we've got a nice little hole and we can put gold in that. Okay, how to make a good forge fire. Lots of easy kindling. Make it more flammable with oil. Grab a load of coal. Because I don't care about my hands getting dirty. Get all that. Air intake. Get your lighter, stick it in. Set it on fire. Make it burn. This is how to unsafely make your fire bigger. Oh jeez. Yep. You're getting very close to that bag then as well. Well, that went well. It did. You're going to put it out? <laughs> okay. We've not got much, we've just got smoke. This is why I use a hairdryer. It gets a bit more than smoke. In case you're wondering, the um, uh, aluminium here is just to stop my fan getting completely destroyed. So, we've got here the gold all in the little crucible. Now we need to put it into the forge and make it extremely hot. I need to find a place on the coals that's not, that it's not going to fall over on. So we put it in there. We remove our gloves because they're starting to smoke, and we leave it. Okay, the layer of gold is starting to turn white and starting to glow. We're just going to leave that, and we'll report back when something happens. Okay, so it is glowing rather orange. That looks very good. Still looks fairly solid, so we're going to crank up the hairdryer even more and see if we can make it any hotter. Should be interesting. Yep. This is where you put gloves on and stand back and really hope it doesn't fall over. Well, it's still in one piece. That's good. Might be getting a bit of coal in it, though. But yeah, we'll leave it like this and we'll get back. Okay, so the stuff I was doing in the forge originally just crumbled to bits and didn't particularly have quality. That's because there was just so much other stuff. Luckily, I have a backup. Um, this stuff is stuff that's directly just salvaged from ram fingers, because when you usually do it, the gold plating drops off the ram fingers. So I collected all of the bits in here. This is a much more pure content. Hopefully this will work. Everyone put the fingers crossed. Okay, so I've got a tiny bit of gold in my tweezers. And I've got the thing going and it's very, very hot. Now I need to very, very carefully... I'll switch the power off for this even. Because I just need to very, very carefully get this 
into the crucible. Let the water boil off because it has been stored in water. Very carefully put it into the top of the crucible. It's there. Oh, it's it's solidified. We don't we can do it off residual heat because it's so small. That's really, really useful because that means we don't have to deal with air. Now, with that temperature, that's done something. We're gonna take it back out again and see what it does, okay? So ever so careful, ever so careful, ever so careful. It's falling over, it's falling over, help. I don't know if I can help. I was just saying help because it makes me feel better. Right, so that piece of gold has been cooled. That's the largest piece we're gonna get, most likely. Let's just cool my tweezers down. So. Didn't cool my tweezers down enough. So, if I get this, this is hopefully a solid piece of gold. It is a solid piece of gold. Okay, so if I just hold that around in my hand. There you go. Focus the camera on that. I'll try. Where is it? <laughs> on the end of the tweezer there. I can't even see it. Okay, so it was too small to focus the camera on it manually, so we got my microscope and pointed the camera down the lens. It was such a bodge job. But anyway, we have a couple of images of the gold. They're not the best quality, but it's the best we could do with what we have. And it shows the gold up close. It's not a perfect bead. It wasn't perfectly melted, but it sticks together. It's decent, and really this quantity is not going to be useful for anything. But the gold was extracted. We have proof. It went well. Hopefully in the future I'll be able to do this on a larger scale and improve my methods. Maybe use a purer hydrochloric acid, use aqua regia to dissolve the gold so that we have a pure gold solution instead of gold mixed with bits of plastic and other rubbish, because that's what ruined one of them. Also the fact that it fell into the forge and got covered in charcoal, that didn't help either. But yeah, so I hope we've proved and proved it can be done and it was an interesting thing to watch. This isn't feasible on the scale we were doing it, so if you want to do it at home I would recommend like getting a lot of computer parts, or if you don't have a, not com a lot of computer parts, not expecting particularly large results, because this is like one millimeter across to give you an idea. But anyway, it was a interesting thing, I hope you've enjoyed watching, until next time.